Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mediocre Takes Podcast, the YouTube channel at least. Today we're doing another Mediocre Monthly, and today we're talking about Blue Beetle Graduation Day. Anyways, this one's actually completed with six issues, so let's just get into it. Okay, so Blue Beetle Graduation Day follows Hime as he's graduating from high school when he gets attacked by another Beetle. I think it's the yellow one? I forgot the yellow one's name. After... At transmission, he realizes that an alien group is trying to attack Earth, and it's up to him to try to like stop it and make peace with these other aliens, and eventually they do. Okay, so this comic actually got me into wanting to read more Blue Beetle comics, which is surprising because I thought this comic was just okay. I like seeing Superman in this and how nice he is to Hime's mom. I like the other Beetles, specifically Ziomara. I like how she talks about how her scarab has made her feel afraid and I really want to see more of her and I just like the fact that she's a teacher too. I just love that character so much even though we don't get that much of her I just enjoyed every second we did get of her. I love seeing Starfire and Cyborg in this. I love these characters so much and I'm really glad to see them again. How did you feel about uh, how Starfire looked in this. I thought she looked fine. The hair, I don't know, something about the hair bothered me, but overall I think she looked okay. Why, was there something wrong with her look? I really liked her hair. I liked how it literally looked like fire. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just so like voluptuous. I absolutely loved that. And I also loved her outfit as well. I really loved the change. I love her original outfit. I, I think I love every outfit she's ever worn. I just think this one, I love how it looks it's so beautiful yeah the hair it took me a while to get used to because at first it was kind of jarring but i did end up enjoying it overall i have to talk about my main problem with this comic that stopped me from really enjoying this i think this comic was a bit too obvious about hime's growth like i felt like the writer was treating me like i'm too stupid to understand the character growth hime is going to go through when it's honestly just really obvious i feel like this story needed to be a bit more subtle okay so i was confused why the other beetles had different powers like did i miss something i feel like i missed something Thing. I definitely missed something. One had like super strength and the other could like shapeshift while he may have such different powers compared to those two. Yeah, I probably missed something. I don't think it's ever discussed. I just think they have different powers. Like they're different beetles mm. with different powers. I like how Hime's scarab is afraid and I like that moment Hime realizes the scarab is afraid. Hime getting better armor because he realized his place in the world is something I did not like. It felt something I would see out of a bad shonen anime. It honestly, no, not only it felt like something I would see out of Bad Shown in anime, it felt like something I would see off of Dragon Ball Z. Ooh. And you know it's not good when it's Dragon Ball Z-like. So I, I just feel the need to say that, you know? Marco, it wasn't just that. It was also the power of friendship. Yes, which is also very much Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's, it's just not my thing, you know? I'm tired of it. As someone who grew up with, like, that kind of stuff, I'm, I'm just... I'm just sick of it, you know? Okay, so I know Victoria and the the villain in the Blue Beetle movie aren't the same characters, but I was surprised that Victoria did not end up being a villain because that's kind of the route they went with a similar character in the movie. I'm also surprised they didn't go with that route because Victoria was like saying and doing some pretty shady stuff in this comic. So I was just surprised when that didn't end up going the way I thought it would. I think I haven't read the other Blue Beetle comics, but I think that that could be a a route that they take in the future not that i think it would be like a big storyline but maybe she just sort of strays away too deep into some sort of like i don't know nefarious storyline and they sort of have to like wrangle her in or something but the way she acts and stuff about how she's like using alien technology to like create better technology to help people that could really go into more morally gray areas that they can explore in like future comics if they want to. So how do we feel about the, uh, the suit having a mouth? I also found that weird. <laughs> like, is it, is, cause, okay, whenever that happens, my main question is, is this, it, like, is it Jaime's mouth and the suit is just sort of like around his lips or something? Like, what's going on there? I don't know. It, it did feel really strange. I think it's because we just so recently watched the Blue Beetle movie that I'm thinking, how would they do that in real life? <laughs> yeah, no, I literally thought the same exact thing. It was it was a bit weird, but I, I was able to ignore it for the most part. Yeah, I like I think I just like how it make him look uh, a little freaky. So twice in this comic, they replace two common names. They Frankenstein two words with the word Lex. So you have the Lexla, which is obviously te Tesla <laughs> and Lex, right? And then they have Marco. They have Lex talk. <laughs> like, come on. Like, but my, okay. I knew that, like, I, I, I know that, like, 
whenever they're trying to compare something in this comic to real life, they'll either use Lex Luthor or Bruce. Like, what is it? Like, Wayne Tech or something? But, like, Alexa, Lex Talk, like, please, <laughs> please. When I saw the word Lex Talk, I literally rolled my eyes. It was <laughs> so gross. Like, what? They couldn't have thought of, like, anything better. <laughs> when Bruce and Ted were arguing, Ted was like, like, whatever, I'll keep you in the loop. You can, you can do your disappearing act now. And then, like, Bruce is just gone. That was perfect because I'm not a fan of when people are like, he's gone now, isn't he? The sass that Ted was bringing to the table made the call out less annoying. Okay, page 17, issue 4. Why did we get a detailed blue beetle ass shot? Like, the okay, the angle was, like, from the ground. Blue Beetle was striking a pose and he was like his he was like turned around and he was like looking at his ass because I'm assuming his phone was in there because uh his friend was like sending them a message. And my like my immediate thought is like, is this Nightwing? Like what what's with the butt shot? Yeah, okay, because um Nightwing. How do I explain this? For some reason, Nightwing is known for his ass now. Like <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but like a lot of the like cover art and like things they draw for Nightwing or like to promote Nightwing, it's showing off his ass. And it was like it was so confu like <laughs> I just don't know why we got the ass shot. That just like that really confused me. So when you first said ass shot, I had no idea what you're talking about. Like I, you said issue four, page seventeen. I'm like, what what moment is she talking about? And then I remembered when when he got that phone call and I'm like wait a minute i remember that actually yes um, i will say um his ass looks more normal than a nightwing ass they give nightwing the most like supple and voluptuous butt for for, for no reason but anyway anyway <laughs> i didn't like the goth bird guy i forgot his name i knew that that's what he was supposed to be he was supposed to be like annoying and irritated with the situation but i didn't like it and that's also the first time i have ever seen that character and the last I have literally never seen him appear in anything else I've read. Okay, I understand that this was a limited run. That being said, I feel like the turnaround for all the heroes uh, to be on Jaime's side was just a bit too quick. And like, it was like, it was, it was quick. And then it was like very intense. Like everyone was like, no, we trust you, Jaime. This is, this is all for you. You got to do this. And it's like, it made sense that Superman was immediately like, oh no, I trust you, Jaime. You should do this. But Batman, I sort of expected him to say something like, I'm not sure about this, but I trust Superman's judgment on this. It just felt a little strange that like everyone except the goth bird was like, okay, Jaime, you got this. Yeah, once again, it definitely needed more subtlety. This is a specific thing I hate and a problem I have when I'm trying to write my own stories. And that's when one character tells how much they appreciate another character. But at the same time, like, that's not something you would say normally, you know? Yeah. Overall, I think this is an okay comic. I just like... It was too obvious at times, like it was trying to hit me over the head with how obvious the themes were and the moral of the story was. But it was okay. I think it did interest me a lot more in Blue Beetle. I definitely do plan on reading some Blue Beetle comics after this. There is, the, I think, the 2006 run that follows Hime. The, the collected versions aren't completed, even though it's like so many years old by now. There's only the first 24 issues in like a bind up and the last 12 aren't. So I don't know if they're ever going to finish that. They probably won't. Um, but yeah, this got me interested in Blue Beetle, which I'm happy about. I just don't think it was the best comic in general, but at least it got me more interested in the character. I think this was a fine story. The issues I have with it derive from the fact that it is only six issues long. The story really would have benefited from having like a couple more issues or cutting out a couple scenes. It was really obvious to me that Fadeaway's like side quest with Jaime was put in there to set up the next Blue Beetle series. And I just wish we got more so it didn't only feel like they were only there for that specific reason. I also wasn't particularly sold on all the heroes flipping so quickly to being on Jaime's side and him forgiving them. This started with him feeling alone and people not trusting him and him like being a little, you know, directionless. And I really feel like they expedited the character growth, which really made the ending feel like cheesy and cheap it wasn't a bad comic it just could have been better anyways you guys that's our thoughts on the blue beetle graduation day comic if you want to send us a voice message on spotify for podcasters there'll be a link in the description to do so below we have social media which will all be in the description and that's everything so goodbye